uh, today um, for our webinar on COSA advocacy initiatives. We're glad to have you with us today. And our presenters, oops, I'm sorry, already, slippery fingers here. Our presenters today uh, include Barbara Teague, uh, who will be um, covering for Jim Corden, uh, who is unable to be with us today due to some family uh, issues um, uh, that he's dealing with out on the West Coast. But we're very fortunate to have Sarah Coons from North Carolina join Barbara in giving the um, overview of COSA advocacy activities that Jim was planning to give today. We're also joined by Christine Garrett of Georgia, who is co-chair of the Siri Advocacy and Outreach Committee, and she's going to update you on what um, advocacy activities are coming out of uh, the Siri program as well. So uh, we've got a lot of things to cover. Our agenda uh, will include an, o an advocacy overview and current advocacy plans um, that um, Barbara and Sarah will um, pinch hit for Jim on this. And, and then Christine talking about Siri advocacy and outreach. And then I'll come back on and give you a preview of some of our upcoming member webinars and COSA Preservica webinars and some of our other programs that are on the docket. So lots to look forward to that way. So I think without any further ado, I'm going to turn um, the microphone over to Barbara uh, to give us, um, or at least begin to give us a rundown of um, what advocacy is looking like these days at, uh, within COSA and what we're talking about. So Barbara, welcome. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ann, and thanks to everyone who's joining us today. Becky, would you mind advancing to the next slide? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other groups that we're working with. Um, Barbara, within... you, should be able, you should be able to advance yourself. OK. Um, Is it not working for you? Um, okay. There you go. I did it. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the groups that we work with within the archival profession. And if you're interested in hearing more background about what I'm going to talk about on this slide, Many of you may remember that we, the Advocacy Committee, presented a webinar this time last year with many of these other groups. And we had speakers from SAA, NAGARA, the Regional Archival Association. So if you're interested in more background about what each of these groups does and how we work together, the recording is available on our website. Um, but just a short overview of each of the groups, COSA has two committees that work on advocacy. There's the General Advocacy Committee, which um, we're going to talk about today. And then Siri has an advocacy and outreach subcommittee that actually works on specific electronic records and digital preservation issues that Christine Garrett will talk a little bit further about later. Um, and then our COSA group is represented on the Joint Working Group on Issues and Awareness. And that is a group that's made up of representatives from COSA, SAA, NAGARA, and the Regional Archival Associations. And Jim Corden and I represent COSA on the joint working group. And Anne comes to the meetings that we have monthly to discuss what we're going to work on together. And as you can imagine, with the federal budget coming out, we've been pretty busy. We've been doing quite a bit of coordinating. So we'll have more information for you about what this group is doing later and how we're looking for help from everyone from all of our organizations. Um, NAGARA participates in the joint working group. They're not able to do as much advocacy as the other three groups, mainly because of their federal members. But they do keep track of what we're doing. And if there is anything that the working group does that they feel as if they cannot sign on to, then they don't do it, but we try to do as much as we can to uh, to be able to allow all, all four groups to assign to sign on to statements when we issue statements. Um, SAA, of course, is a very large organization, the Society of American Archivists, um, and they have three groups that work on public policy and public awareness. The Committee on Public Awareness and on Public Policy are both represented on the joint working group and work very well to 
you know, sometimes we give them ideas about things to do that they're able to do with their larger membership that we might not necessarily do. Um, issues and advocacy, issues and awareness roundtable within SAA has gotten to be a lot more active in the past few years, and they're doing some interesting things to help us with background, uh, looking at specific members of Congress and how they might vote. So that's that's been a very good group to work with. And the Regional Archival Association was just added to the Joint Working Group on Issues and Awareness last year, and that has been a great way for us to reach regional archival associations throughout the country, you know, the Midwest Archives Association, the Mid-Atlantic Regional Archives Association, even the state associations like the Kentucky Council on Archives can be reached through that group as well. And your COSA Advocacy Committee has, um, I believe, eight members listed here. David Carmichael from Pennsylvania is our board liaison. Jim Corden from Indiana is the chair of the committee. And Patricia Smith-Mansfield and Tim Baker are representatives from the executive committee. We meet monthly uh, to talk about issues that are happening, of course, what we've been talking about probably for the past several uh, months is preparing for what the federal budget proposal might be, what we might need to do as it moves through Congress, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But those are our members. Um, we're all, we probably will be looking at adding additional members when the, at the annual meeting. Um, several of us have been on this committee for quite a while, and it's probably good to have some turnover. So if anyone is really interested in advocacy, keep this in mind, and you might want to volunteer for a board committee, such as the Advocacy Committee later. Okay. In the past, um, I guess last year, uh, COSA re-upped its membership in the National Coalition for History. We had been a board member um, several years before, but being a board member and having a, a, a voting seat on the board requires a little bit more of a dues payment. So we re-upped those dues this past year, and I think that's been pretty helpful. Uh, SAA has a seat. That's, I think they they always have a seat because they pay a large amount of dues. So we're there to give another archival voice in the National Coalition for History. As you can imagine, the NCH has been really busy since the President's budget came out. They've sent out a couple of action alerts for NEH and NEA and uh, some of the other programs that are in the State Department that are for fellowships and internships. I think I'm, I'm sure you've seen those, and if you haven't, we will send those out. But we find it's very beneficial to be a member of the NCH because we're, we get updates from their executive director, Lee White. We're able to work with the Congressional History Caucus. I think you may remember last year a call went out to for all of us to ask our uh, members of Congress to join the Congressional History Caucus, and that was fairly successful. Then there's more information on the National Coalition for History website, and it's listed on the, um, on the slide. Also, Jim Corden is our representative to that group, and he is the one who sits on the on the policy board and gives us reports on what's going on. I'm sure this is not news to anyone, but we'll, we'll cover it here in our advocacy presentation. Uh, President Trump sent a skinny budget uh, to Congress. I think it was called a skinny budget because it doesn't really give much detail on what line items are suggested to be cut. It just cuts like whole agencies, basically. Um, so uh, one of the reasons we know what agencies are going to be eliminated because they didn't have anything that was listed in the skinny budget. For other agencies, we don't really know what's coming because they they just have like a, they don't even have a top of the line um, figure for some agencies. So, so we do know the NEH and IMLS are, um, set to be zero budgeted in the proposal as it was sent to Congress, and as well as the National Endowment for the Arts. I guess we probably draw the line when we're doing advocacy where we think about we know archival organizations have gotten humanities grants, and we know archival organizations have gotten IMLS grants. 
So we really haven't included any A in the, in the agencies that we're watching, although some of our other uh, ally groups have, the Society of American Archivists included NEA in its statement, and I think some of the um, other groups that have issued statements, the, like the Alliance of Museums, the American Library Association, the National Humanities Alliance, have all included all these agencies that were cut, including probably the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. But most of our archival um, advocacy that we've been discussing within the larger group with SAA and Nagara and RAC relates to these two agencies that we know have been zero budgeted so far. Now, this is what we're waiting for, uh, specific information on these agencies that we're, of course, very interested in, uh, the National Archives and Records Administration, the National Historical Publications and Records Commission, the Library of Congress, and the Smithsonian. Um, as you know, NHPRC generally does get zero budgeted. I mean, there have been very few years when we haven't been fighting for the five or ten million to go back in the budget. And from what we're hearing, that's probably what's going to happen. I mean, we're not really sure. This may be something that it could be so small that it doesn't really um, catch the eye of any, any of the new people in OMB or in any administration. But most likely, I think the uh, government affairs person at the National Archives, John Hamilton, is expecting that this money is it's just going to be zero budgeted and the and the, the NHPRC is going to be taken out of the National Archives budget and zero budgeted. They're also expecting um, probably at least a 10% cut for NARA and these other agencies, or at least that seems to be the scuttlebutt around Washington is that there's going to be at least a 10% cut. Um, and when some of the agencies that we know about that have been proposed for cuts, such as the State Department and the uh, EPA had larger cuts than 10%. So I guess we're supposed to be grateful for 10%. But that's all supposition because NARA doesn't really have the bottom line number and they don't they don't actually know what, what is going to be um, proposed for their agency. The skinny budget came out on March 16th with the promise that the further budget proposal that had more detail, including these smaller agencies, would be out within two weeks. So we don't really know if it really will be out within two weeks, but we tend to expect it maybe before the end of March, but we'll see. You'll hear from us when we hear what happens to NHPRC, believe me. <laughs> and these are some of the things that we're planning uh, within the joint working group that, we've, that we have shared with our other with our own organizations, we thought um, within our planning that NEH has a large constituency of historians and people who you know, write writers and scholars and people who work in the humanities, and that NEH has a natural constituency that works for it. Um, IMLS has ALA and huge and really good lobbying on ALA's part. Um, so we thought we probably would spend our, our organization the biggest amount of our effort on whatever happens with NHPRC and NARA. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to do anything with IMLS and NEH. In fact, probably what we're going to do, um, COSA will probably within the next week or so issue a statement about IMLS and how IMLS has helped COSA and NEH and how NEH has helped um, archival organizations throughout the country. So we're going to make a statement that will fit in with what some of our other allied organizations have done, but we're not really going to send out action alerts. I don't know if that makes any sense, but what, what we're thinking is that IMLS and NEH have so many people working for them that a good, a, a good, strong statement from our organization is good. And, you know, as an individual, if you want to call or uh, write or call again <laughs> to your member of Congress or senator, I'm sure it's a good thing and it wouldn't hurt at all. 
but we think with NARA and NHPRC really having their only constituency is archivists, and NHPRC also has the documentary editors, which is an even smaller group than archivists. So um, if we focus our efforts on NHPRC and the action alerts that we're going to do for what we expect will be not good budget news, that um, is what our organizations have planned to do. Um, and it's really a good thing that we're working in this joint working group because we're not doing, we're not duplicating efforts which we have tended to do on occasion. SAA has agreed to have two groups who are working on gathering stories about um, the agencies that are going to be defunded or that we expect to be defunded. So they're, they're going to get those stories and share them with the rest of us so that we'll be able to use those in the advocacy efforts that we're, that we're doing. Um, and SAA is also going to have an, a, a a web page for action alerts and for text for action alerts so we can direct all of our members to that web page when we get more information. There is a little bit of good news from the NHPRC. You, you wouldn't really believe that, but there is good news. Um, there, uh, Mark Meadows from North Carolina is going to be the new member on the commission representing the U.S. House of Representatives. He's replacing my congressman, Andy Barr, uh, from Kentucky, who had gotten another committee assignment and didn't feel that he could also work on NHPRC. Um, Sarah, do you want to talk a little bit about Mark Meadows and what he, I mean, how interested and helpful he is with NHPRC? Sure. Um, just very briefly, Mark Meadows is a representative from the western part of the state. And one of the other advantages with having him on the committee, uh, not that Andy Barr didn't do a great job from Kentucky, but Mark is also on the subcommittee that oversees um, the activities of NARA and NHPRC within the House. So he, he pulls some weight um, on, on the subcommittee and the government oversight overall committee. So that's very positive. And he seems very interested in NHPRC and actually discussing maybe seeking reauthorization, uh, which is a process that um, federal programs have to undergo every few years. So that's been um, a, a nice, uh, I, I think, addition that he'll be interested in. And hopefully when we're in D.C. in April, um, a couple of members of the advocacy committee will have the opportunity to go meet with him and talk with him about the importance of NHPRC. This is something that the advocacy committee members have been doing um, all along. We regularly try to go see key members of the House and the Senate, either from the budgetary process or those interested in NHPRC, and definitely the House and the Senate rep. So um, we're looking forward to the opportunity to meet with Representative Meadows about his new role on the commission. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone really remembers this, but NHPRC hasn't really been reauthorized since uh, I think it. I think the reauthorization ran out in, or the authorization ran out in 2009. There was a hearing in 2010 to get NHPRC reauthorized, that, but did not come, come of. Nothing came of it. So it's really good that Representative Meadows is interested in taking on this reauthorization because it is really hard to get money appropriated to something that's not authorized because you have to go through the step of explaining it's not authorized and how it really needs to be authorized. And let's just for this year do the appropriation. Well, we've been doing that, you know, since 2009. And when the OMB doesn't put any money in for NHPRC, then we end up having to go through this harder process of getting money added back in. And it just gives the agency a little bit more um, caveats, I guess, and more, it, it's just easier to get it through the appropriations process if it's authorized. Um, so that should be pretty helpful, we hope, if Mark Meadows seems to be really taking interest and we're very happy about that. Um, Jim Corden actually was just in D.C. yesterday to speak to the Digital Government Institute, but he also went by to see John Hamilton at the National Archives, and Mark Meadows and his staff are going to go take a tour of NARA and get some interest, get some background information later this week. And another good news is um, 
Mark Meadows instead of just any old staff person who he's going to have his liaison be with NHPRC. It's going to be his chief of staff. So that's actually really good, and that's a move up from the liaison that we had at Andy Barr's office, although he's he's been really great. His name is Eric Dunning, and he's still helping behind the scenes. He's been watching for NHPRC, any bills that go on, too. So even though my representative, Andy Barr, has signed off, their staff is still helping us keep the eye out. So that's that's been pretty helpful, too, to know that we're not going to lose that contact. Um, One of the things, when Jim was at the Digital Government Institute yesterday, he was talking to, I believe, about three or 400 federal and maybe state and maybe local records management employees who had some interesting questions about COSA. And for one, one thing, they were very interested in is our state electronic records initiative, what we were doing with electronic records, and particularly with uh, the Electronic Records Day and how it has grown over the past several years. So I will um, turn over to Christine Garrett, who's, uh, who is one of the people who's running Electronic Records Day. She and Kathleen Rowe are both co-chairs of the Siri Advocacy and Outreach Subcommittee. Kathleen also couldn't be here today, but so Christine is going to take this on and tell you all about the Siri Advocacy and Outreach Subcommittee. And then when she's finished, she and Sarah and Ann and I can take any of your questions about any advocacy concerns that you have. Thank you. Christine? Hi. Can everybody hear me? Can you hear me? You're a little faint, I Christine. Can. But Okay. Well, let me see if I can get my sound up. I'll just shout into my computer. That'll work. <laughs> so hi, everyone. As Barbara said, I'm Christine Garrett. I'm with the Georgia Archives. Sure, most of you know Kathleen Rowe from New York, and we do serve as the co-chairs of the Siri Advocacy and Outreach Committee. Of course, as Barbara mentioned, Electronic Records Day, that's the biggest thing that we have done thus far. It's held October 10th, it's been around for over five years, and when it started, it was really a social media campaign, you know, just raising awareness of electronic records, and advocating for them. This past year, we grew it with two of our members, Jim Cundy of Kentucky and Chris Stinson of Oregon, who gave a webinar that was aimed at local government. Many of us have you know, responsibilities to work with local government, but they're often overlooked when it comes to these larger trainings. You know, we focus on ourselves, we may focus on state agencies, but local agencies they do get overlooked, so we decided to target them. And Jim and Chris covered topics such as bring your own device, social media, and electronic records management systems, looking at vetting and purchasing them. We had a pretty good turnout, 80 people, which is great because it turns out that October 10th was Columbus Day, so some people were not working that day. 80 on a holiday is a pretty good turnout. If you're interested in seeing the webinar, it is on COSA's YouTube channel. I believe if you go in there and search, it's the first thing that pops up. So you might want to look at it and share it with local government just to help them out. On a similar vein as Electronic Records Day is Sunshine Week. You may have noticed last week that COSA and some of our aligned organizations we're tweeting. Those tweets came from our committee, well, some of them at least, can't claim all of them. It wasn't as a big event as Electronic Records Day, but we felt as a committee that it was really important to continue throughout the year to have time when we remind people about electronic records. It's not just a one-time deal. We have to deal with these every day. So Sunshine Week, we thought, was a great time to remind people about electronic records. Another thing you may have seen from us are spotlight blog posts, which go on COSA's blog and other social media outlets. They're short articles. They're about a page and a half when you break it down in words. And they're aimed at highlighting the work done at State Ape Archives on or for electronic records. So for example, 
Hawaii was the first one, and they focused on their success in advocating to its state legislature to give money to help fund their electronic records program. Maryland was second up, and theirs focused on web harvesting. We are looking for more states to share what they've been doing. It may be trivial to you what you're doing, but you know most of us do operate almost in a vacuum. We have theory, we have contacts with other archives, but a lot of the day-to-day, -day, we don't know what's going on at other archives. So for example, you may be looking to see how can we get the, art, the state legislature to give us more money. Well, now you know that Hawaii has success, so you may think about contacting Hawaii. Now, what did you do? Maybe there's some stuff that Hawaii did that you didn't think about. Similarly, maybe you want to do a web harvesting project, and now you know that Maryland did one, so you can contact them and ask for advice. So we're really looking at any kind of article that could help other states. So if you have something you want to talk about, you know, please contact us and we'll help you, you know, with the perimeters of an article. We try to get one out each quarter, so we don't try to push it. We know you have a lot of work to do, but we're really interested in hearing what's going on at your archives. And finally, Barbara has been working on the State Electronic Records Report. Once that is done, we're going to use what's in that report to develop articles and other things to raise awareness of theory with groups such as NACIO, the Secretary of the State, the National Governors Association, the International Organization of Municipal Clerks, and similar organizations of local or state officials that we really want to form a relationship with. They're the ones who create records electronic records, we're the ones who are supposed to preserve them, and we really need to work together in order for these records to be preserved for the long term or just managed. They might not be managing them properly, so we need to work with them to make sure records are managed properly and then preserved. And I think that is all I have. Great. Thank you, Christine. Um, you noticed Christine mentioned that um, one of the things they're looking for is additional spotlight blog posts. And I know that all of you, I see your names on here, and I know most of you could write a really wonderful blog post about some of the things that you're doing with electronic records or digital preservation. And that would be of help to me. As Christine mentioned, I'm working on the state of state electronic records report, and I'm looking for as uh, I think Sarah Graham has called it, it's the mega doc, so it's a little bit long and boring, and it needs some exciting stories from everybody's archives. So if you're uh, interested in the, the Spotlight blog, please let Christine or Kathleen know. We would all really appreciate it. Um, now it's time for our Q&A, so we can take questions from the chat box. I did want to uh, let everyone know probably what we're going to be doing, even though we don't yet know that NHPRC is going to be zero budgeted, but we expect it. Um, John Hamilton suggested to Jen that we probably all should start writing our members of Congress or calling and asking them to speak with their uh, colleagues who are on the House Appropriations Committee to uh, let them know that we support NHPRC and we want to make sure that it's funded. So we'll, in the next week or so, we'll be sending out an action alert once we know exactly how we're going, to, how we really need to word this. But I think it'll be pretty simple that we just contact our own member. And if your member is on the House Appropriations Committee, that's great. Um, but if not, then you can have your member just say, I support NHPRC and please please let the House Appropriations Committee know. And I think one thing that we've found over the past several years, when you get 20 or 30 calls or letters to a congressperson's office, that actually seems to make a big difference. Now, there seems to be a lot more activism lately, so 20 or 30 calls might not be the big thing that it used to be because we, at one point we had a uh, the House Oversight Committee said we had sent in enough letters, and I think we'd only sent in about 30 emails or faxes at that point. That's probably, we're probably going to have to do more <laughs> this year, I imagine. But just keep that in mind when you get the, uh, the request to send to contact your congressperson. 
So, are there any questions in the chat box yet? Let's see. Anybody have any questions for Christine or Sarah or me or Ann? Anything about um, you've heard today or any questions about the what may be coming up with the federal budget or any of the other groups that we work with? Yes. Yes. Glenn is wondering. Sorry, put my mic by my mouth. That helps. Okay. Glenn is wondering what an action alert is. Oh well, uh, that's just what we call an email that we send you that once <laughs> when we ask you to do something. Um, I think we we started calling them action alerts back when we were working on the. Uh, PAR legislation, the Preserving the American Historical Record Act, and when we also started dealing with NHPRC being zero budgeted every year, we'll just, I mean, it's really, it'll really just be an email from someone in COSA that will have the title Action Alert, NHPRC Action Needed, and then there'll be more information in the text. We're not really sophisticated enough as some of these, I've seen some of these other groups who really <laughs> such a good job where you just you put in your name and your uh, and your zip code and it will generate an email to your congressperson or your senator which is really interesting so um, I don't, I'm not quite sure how they do that but what we do really is suggest that you either when you get the action alert um, that you either fax to the to the office or that you email or use the email form or call. Uh, don't send a real paper letter because those still go through some kind of examination for anthrax, so you don't want to do that. Um, and I know sometimes, I believe it's been pretty hard to get through to some of the senators and members of Congress's office, but I think if you keep trying to call, you can you can do that. But Generally, faxes work, um, and then the email form that's used by most of the offices work too. Barbara, this is Ann. I've noticed that a, a lot of uh, of congressional offices don't have fax numbers publicly available anymore, and I'm I I think we're almost forced to do email and, and phone at this point. Has that been your experience? Um. Well, mine in Kentucky still have faxes. I think that's probably <laughs> because it's Kentucky, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that probably is the case because it's it's pretty overwhelming if you if you think you're getting like I don't know 100 faxes a day and they're spitting out of your machine. So I can see that they would move away from that, and they've also moved away from just like a free form email. Most offices have a form where you have to fill in. Exact, you know, you you can't really send it from your own email account to their email account. You have to fill in a, a set form. Yeah, which can be kind of frustrating if you're if if what you want to say doesn't exactly conform to their subject headings right. and all of that kind of stuff. Right. Okay, I don't see any more questions. I know some of you all have questions, right? Um, I don't know, you may be interested, we're not necessarily asking, everyone probably remembers the uh, Preserving the American Historical Record Act and we were moving along pretty well back before the economic downturn. We had 30 co-sponsors in the House and maybe 10 or 15 in the Senate. Um, so we're not really looking at anything like that at the moment, but it's because it's not really a time to add to the budget. But then, you know, maybe we could take advantage of some of the people being a little bit more well positioned. If Mark Meadows is really interested in HPRC, it might be possible to look at a higher reauthorization, although that probably wouldn't work. But, I mean, there, we just need to be ready, I guess, to deal with whatever comes up because it seems to be a pretty um, agile time of budget negotiations. And I guess everyone probably remembers, too, that the federal government is on a continuing resolution that only lasts through the end of April. 
So um, Jim had heard yesterday from John Hamilton that some of the staffers are already working on the next continuing resolution that would get uh, the federal government through the end of the fiscal year on September 30th. And, and I think we all, we all expected that. <laughs> would you explain a little bit about a, what, a, what a continuing resolution is? Oh, I'll try. Um, it's when uh, Congress fails to pass a budget on time, so they um, instead pass a resolution in both of the houses to agree on a certain amount of spending to go forward for a certain amount of time. When they did the last continuing resolution, it, last, it was for six months to go from the beginning of the fiscal year until now. Um, so that's good generally for the federal agencies that we work with because continuing resolutions continue the current budget. So that would mean that's not there's not really a cut because the budget as it was in the prior year is continued. That, does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense to me. Yeah. So I guess the best probably good to hope for a continuing resolution that can be agreed upon for the end of the fiscal year. And I think there was a little bit of gossip that it's possible it may continue on into the next year, but we don't really know. Barbara, it, do you want to... It's hard to predict. Barbara, do you want to speak a little bit to our other advocacy efforts with groups like Jim addressing a group this week and, and the NACIO conference coming up? Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you. Uh, yes, Jim did just, Jim Corden spoke at the Digital Government Institute yesterday, which was, I don't know, three or 400 people from the federal government. And then um, Tara Graham is going to be attending the NACIO meeting, the National Association of State Chief Information Officers, at the end of April at the same time the COSA board is meeting. Sarah is going to be across the river going to the NACIO meeting. and available to go to all the sessions. And also at that meeting, Jim Corden, Sarah Kuntz, and I are going to go over for an afternoon and speak at a roundtable discussion with the state CIOs where they they get in small roundtables and, and have a certain subject and they move around every 20 minutes. So we'll be at a table for like an hour and 30, hour and 40 minutes. So a group of CIOs will move around and talk with us, and we are going to talk with them about electronic records. And Jim also spoke to the uh, National Association of Secretaries of State in February. They were meeting in D.C., and of course, that is a group that we really want to work with more closely. Um, he and Kathleen Williams from NHPRC talked about federal funding and importance of record keeping in the states and had a very good reception, I believe. Is there anything else about that that I've forgotten, Sarah? No, I, yeah, that's great. I just thought it was good to talk about, you know, informal advocacy with other important groups, too. Yeah, and that's something I think that the board has decided to do and to put some uh, funding toward to pay for travel so that people are able to go to these meetings and make connections that you don't but you can't necessarily make the email. Um, so it's good to put a face with the name and be able to go to these meetings and uh, meet with allied groups that we want to work with. In fact, NAS, NASIO, uh, the National Governors Association, and COSLA, the Chief Officers of State Library Agencies, have all agreed to participate in the INLS grant that we are hoping to get invited to apply for. We did a small, you know, a two-page proposal, pre-proposal, I guess. So we're waiting to see if we get invited to uh, participate. But we would work with these four organizations to make people more aware of uh, electronic records management and digital preservation issues. We've also had some good conversations with those organizations about some of the kinds of things that, that COSA might be able to provide them in the way of material about, not just COSA, but about guidance material um, that they can then pass along to their members. And we, we do that already with uh, the National Governors Association, have done for a number of years, uh, participated with them on a 
a manual for incoming uh, gubernatorial administrations. Now we're talking with them about maybe chopping that manual up into more digestible chunks and create kind of one or two page guidance statements um, that they can then pass along to their membership. So uh, we're, we're kind of working that angle with them and, and NASA is also interested in, in that sort of thing for secretaries of state. So I think that we're going to be able over the next couple of years or so to really um, provide some really great material uh, to those organizations and ultimately their members. Right, and we're actually starting on the first um, the first of those products, the uh, series Tools and Resources Subcommittee is working on a digitization uh, project management guide that everyone is going to love when, when it's released. Um, Alan Ramsey, Nick Canizio, I hope I'm getting your name right, and uh, Carol Kussman, Veronica Martzel, and the rest of the committee have done a great job on getting this uh, document together. And I believe the next one they're going to tackle is email, sort of at the request of the National Governors Association. So, well, that's going to be great, too. Now, who else has a question? <laughs> no more questions. Okay, well, um, you all probably you know my email and uh, Anne's email because we email you all the time. So if you, if you have any questions, please let one of us know, and Becky too. So uh, just email us if you have any concerns or questions, and we'll be able to we'll try to address it. And now, okay, I will turn this back over to Anne to talk about some of the upcoming webinars and events that we have. Thanks, Barbara. And I'm delighted to talk with you about some of the things that we've got on the docket that are that are coming up, and um, in both the COSA member webinars as well as the COSA Preservoca webinars. So there's a, a lot going on on both fronts, and you can find out more about all of these webinars and register also online uh, when you go to our website. Uh, for the COSA member webinars, uh, just click on the program tab in the top navigation bar and you'll see member webinars and you can click on that and and read some, you know, about a paragraph's worth of information. There's a registration link and so forth. So you don't have to wait until Barbara sends out the notification for them. You can get on board even earlier. And with the um, COSA Preservica, webinars, uh, you go to the PERTS portal on our website and, um, and look for the uh, education and training section and that will take you directly to those webinars. Um, we've, got a, we've got a special webinar coming up in April on the 18th of, of April. It's a little different than, uh, than what we've done recently. Uh, this webinar is going to be uh, delivered by the Task Force on Technical Approaches to Email Archives, uh, which is a, a, a group that is uh, sponsored by the Andrew Mellon Foundation and the Digital Preservation Coalition. And they've got quite a charge um, in examining and assessing current efforts to preserve email, to um, figure out a conceptual and technical framework in which these efforts can operate, not as competing solutions, but as integrated um, elements um, that uh, can can work on in many situations and across many platforms, and to um, construct a working agenda for the community to refine the f the technical framework and adjust existing tools to work within the framework and begin to fill in missing elements. So it's quite a big project, very exciting, I think. And the co-chairs of the task force, Chris Prom and Kate Murray, are going to be leading this webinar on the 18th and um, reporting to the COSA community um, just what's, what they're, where they are now, sort of a status report, and, and kind of look ahead to uh, what they are intending to do. Um, COSA is involved with the task force as a friend. I think that's our title, a <laughs> friend of the task force. So we're happy to be involved, even in sort of a tangential kind of way, um, but it certainly uh, intersects with the work that um, all of us are doing um, in, our, in our own archive. So that's on April 18th. Uh, the webinar is at 3 p.m. Eastern, 
as all our COSA member webinars are. Uh, for the last several years, uh, the Education and Training Committee who puts our webinar series together for the membership has attempted to use a theme to um, uh, build, uh, build webinars topics uh, in, and this year's theme is Grants Planning and Management. Uh, so uh, several of the upcoming webinars, we're launching the first of that in April, the first webinar in the series in April with uh, what's available in federal funding, which should be really interesting since <laughs> right now we don't know what's available in federal funding. And we may not in April, but um, representatives from IMLS, NEH, and the Council on Library and Information Services will be joining us on April 27th to talk about their funding programs and maybe give us a glimpse of what's, uh, what's ahead. Um, that's at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, this, new this year is um, a, an additional opportunity to get together and to talk with webinar presenters, and we're calling those learning labs. Learning labs are conference calls that will take place the week after the webinar. Uh, so um, what's available in federal funding is on April 27th. That's going to be followed by a learning lab on May 4th, the next, the, the next Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And um, Dan Stokes is going to be joining us from the NHPRC on that learning lab. It's an hour-long conference call, so it's a much more informal kind of environment, really different than a webinar, because you'll be able to just talk back and forth and share information and ask a lot of questions. But of course, Dan will be talking about some of the NHPRC uh, granting opportunities. He did, he did quite a bit of that uh, during the Shrab Town Hall last month but he's going to um, be able to answer your questions directly and um, give you more information. So after all the grant-themed webinars, of which I think there are four or five this year, there will be a learning lab uh, following the week after, same day, same time, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern. And we hope that you take advantage of, of both the webinar and the learning lab. On uh, May 25th, uh, grants Planning, Grants Management is up as the topic, and we have Michael Como from Massachusetts and Julia Marks Young, um, retired archivist from the Mass uh, Mississippi, excuse me, the Mississippi Department of Archives and History, uh, are going to talk about grants planning and managing grants. And then the Learning Lab the following week will be Michael Como coming back to have an informal conversation with anyone who's interested in a conference call, and we'll be sending out the call number uh, so that um, you just get on the phone and you can listen more to his, what he has to say and to ask him a lot of questions. So um, that's kind of on tap what's on coming up immediately for COSA member webinars. And then over on the COSA Preservica side, we're continuing our COSA Preservica Practical Digital Preservation webinars with preserving and protecting audiovisual files, which will be coming up in April on, on the 11th. These webinars are at 2 p.m. Eastern. And you can, again, find out more about all of them on our website when you go to the PERTS portal and click on Education and Training. Uh, May 9th, we'll see Preserving Digitized State Government Records. May 23rd, Governance of Long-Term Digital Information. And June 13th, Best Practices in Digital Preservation International Perspectives. That's going to be really interesting because I know people, presenters are calling in from all over the place. So that'll be, a, that's, that's a logistical uh, challenge, but it should be uh, really interesting. Um, uh, uh, and just as an aside, uh, some of these webinars have been so, so popular that they've, uh, people have been shut out from being able to register. So. Um, we've been working behind the scenes to try and remedy that situation, and we think we've uh, been able to do that. So there shouldn't be any problem with uh, capping off uh, the, um, the audience and people not being able to attend. But remember, there are always recordings from all these webinars, and they're available through our website and at our YouTube channel. And then finally, before I turn it back to Barbara, some upcoming events. We've mentioned. Uh, a few times here today about the 
mid-year board meeting in Washington, D.C. Uh, every year, COSA's board gets together. Uh, they do two face-to-face -face meetings a year, and once the spring one occurs, uh, usually in Washington, and this year it will be April 23rd and 24th. It's an opportunity for the board to get together and spend spend a good day to day and a half to two days together to uh, talk about issues uh, related to COSA, and um, and also talk to some stakeholders while we're in Washington as well. We'll be meeting with representatives from the uh, National Governors Association, from Secretaries of State. We'll be meeting with David Ferriero, the Archivist of the United States. Uh, we will. Um, uh, hold a briefing for other stakeholders, uh, giving them an overview of what we do as an organization focusing on the Electronic Records Initiative. And it's an opportunity for uh, representatives from a whole variety of allied organizations to, to join with us and talk about common issues. Um, we hope that we're going to see many of you in Boise, Idaho this summer. July 12th is the date of our annual meeting. It's going to be a long day. We're packing a lot of things in on one day, uh, beginning at uh, 7 in the morning with breakfast and going until the evening uh, through dinner time. Um, so there will be a um, the morning will be taken up with a uh, NHPRC symposium on uh, the state boards. Uh, they're looking for a lot of input from our members about the future of uh, the state historical records boards and um, get some ideas from membership and uh, create a shared mission going forward, or shared vision, I think is what they, they would like uh, one of the objectives coming out of that meeting to be. Uh, the Nagara Conference starts on the 13th of July, so the day right after our annual meeting is over. The Nagara meeting starts and goes until the 15th. Um, I want to let everybody know that on Friday, so that would be the 14th of July. Um, there will be a Shrab Town Hall, uh, similar, really the same as the Shrab Brown Bag lunch that we've done at annual meetings in the past, but this won't be over lunchtime. And um, luncheon on Friday will be uh, the time when we'll be able to give our awards out. I know Nagara is giving some awards then too. And then on the last day, Friday, uh, uh, Saturday, the 15th, uh, Barbara and Matt Blessing and I will be doing a session bright and early in the morning, hitting some of the um, high line information out of the new ARM survey that we're preparing right now and out of Barbara's report on um, the Siri project. So it's going to be a really busy week. Um, those, so there might be some of you in the audience who are uh, planning to go to the SAA annual meeting out in Portland. Um, and, uh, later in the month of July. And then we've got NDSA coming up in Pittsburgh in October and Best Practices Exchange in November in Boston, Massachusetts. We're really excited about that. So those are some of the things that are that are on the horizon for us that are going to keep all of us really pretty busy in the months ahead. So I'm going to turn it back to Barbara right now so she can close us out. Barbara? Thank you, Anne. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing everyone at one of these meetings coming up. We hope to see you there. Um, just remember that you can always stay connected with COSA. Please check our website. There's lots of information there. And as you all know, the, the PURGE portal um, really just gets better and better every day. Uh, we will have some good news about that. In a month or so, we're working to make it a little bit easier to upload information so that it's not so hard when you, you don't have to go through a two-step process uh, when you upload information to the portal. So that will be good. And then I think we'll be able to encourage people to load more information. Um, Please check out our Twitter and Facebook pages. Uh, they have been a little bit more active in the past little bit, particularly with Sunshine Week. And we've been finding some additional archives and records management programs on Twitter and Facebook and retweeting and sharing on Facebook. So please check, our, check out both of our sites. And make sure if you have a Twitter or a Facebook to follow us, and we will follow you back. Um, so that we can get the word out about how great COSA is and state archives are. Um, 
Okay, I'm sorry. I cannot. Uh, there, thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. I skipped over something very important. This is our sponsors and our funders that help COSA through our corporate sponsorship program, Ancestry.com, Family Search, Preservica, APPX, um, Gaylord Archival, and Space Saver, a, a new uh, sponsor this year. Also, our federal funders, the NHPRC and the IMLS, uh, very helpful to help us with our programming in COSA. And don't forget, one of the most important things we want you to do while you're here or before you leave is to fill out our webinar evaluation. You may sort of think, I do this every month, I don't want to do this, but it actually helps us so much to make sure that we're uh, meeting your needs and to see if there are other things you want to want us to cover. Uh, it really, and it particularly helps me since I'm new with COSA. I'd like to know what you think about the webinars and how things are going. So please take time to uh, to fill this out today. We really would appreciate it. I also want to thank everyone for coming today and for. Um, putting up with us as we dealt with some of our original speakers not being here today, so thanks. Um, and please stay tuned to your email because we will be sending out more information. Uh, COSA will be sending out a, a statement on some of the agencies that we know have already been cut, and then we'll be sending out information on how to contact your member of Congress about NHPRC even before we know it's going to be cut. So stay tuned. You'll be don't delete emails that come from Ann and me. Be sure and read all of them and Ann, Becky and me read all of our emails because we we we're giving you things to do. Uh, anyway, thank you for attending today and please do take time to do the webinar. If you have any questions, please email us, uh some email one of us in COSA or anyone on the COSA board if you have any questions or concerns, we want to keep in touch with you. So thank you so much for attending. Bye, everyone.